Hello everyone, this is Christopher, and today I'm in Stonington, Connecticut, in the studio of Paul Janssens, who is the former distributor and owner of Camper Pottery. And we just made coffee in the way that you have been making coffee for years and years and years, right? Yes. In this filter. And we're going to enjoy a cup together. So tell me, Paul, what is your first memory of coffee ever? The first memory of my coffee, believe it or not, was at home. And at that time, coffee was put in a pot, put on top of the stove, and was boiled. <laughs> and then finally, whatever came out, through a filter, that was the cup of coffee we enjoyed. So was it percolated? No, no, just right. coffee in it, hot yeah. water in it. Yeah. So kind well, of like cowboy coffee yeah. in the U.S. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Hmm. And who was drinking the coffee? Now, we usually didn't, didn't drink coffee for breakfast. We had it at 11 o'clock in the morning. So we didn't have it every day, but on Saturday and Sunday, since we're all home, coffee would be made. Even children? Oh, yeah, if you want one. Yeah. And did you drink coffee as a child? Yeah. How yeah. old? Oh, well, I'm probably about eight or nine years old. I yeah. think in the U.S. they think caffeine is bad for no, children. No, we didn't, we didn't think it that time either. But, you know, let's face it, <laughs> a lot of things were different. On the other hand, in the morning, for breakfast, we all had tea. Mm. So right. what was 11? That was a break? Kind of like uh, yeah. after working yeah. three yeah. or four hours. Right. To tell you very quickly, talking about the typical Dutch way, if you are at a Dutch family on Sunday, in my time, you go to church, you have breakfast, then about, say, around 9 o'clock, then at 11 o'clock, we have coffee. At 12.30, you have sandwiches and soup. Then at 4 o'clock, you have probably a cup of tea and cake. About 6 o'clock, you had a drink, like in my case, probably a glass of wine. And then after dinner, we had another cup of coffee. Two oh. cups of coffee a day, yes. potentially. Yeah. But that was on the Sunday. Yeah. And the whole family. Oh, yeah. if you wanted to participate. Yeah, them. everybody could participate in it, yeah. So. so tell us about this way of making coffee. This is different from what you just right. described in your earliest memories. What so happened? when did you get acquainted with this way of making coffee? Okay, what happened? After the end of the war, because during the war we had no coffee. Mm. The only way they made coffee was from chicory. Mm. I don't know if you know yeah. what chicory yeah. is, yeah. but that's what coffee was made of. And it tasted awful. <laughs> so after the war, manufacturers became very well aware that you should have coffee again, but what are we going to make it with? We didn't have percolators, all that stuff didn't exist. Mm. So somebody invented the cafe, like this. It's a filter in which you put your coffee, you close, put the filter on top of it, a second filter, and then you put hot water in it, and that is what made the coffee. And for many years, we had those at home, and when I went to New Zealand, where I lived for a while, this filter went with me, <coughs> it went to France, and it went to America eventually. Mm -hmm. And that's where I s often, in America, had coffee, till I arrived at Jane's house. And it came big time. <coughs> so this is a one cup method. It's a one cup method. The yeah. method you described in your childhood was a whole pot for many people. Yeah, but so usually in my time you would split it when we were younger with somebody else. So, Did you go to cafes? after the war, or was that a luxury that people did After not? the war, in the beginning, it was a luxury, but then eventually things got better, and then we then all... would cafes use these, or yep. would they have espresso machines? They or had the espresso machine, they have the typical cafe filter, which is like a pitcher <laughs> shape, a big uh, filter in the top, and they pour hot water in it, and they let it drip through it. I don't know what you call them in America, but usually they're a glass with a filter on top, and you put in. This is done for one cup coffee, really. Yep. Like they have an All right. right. Thank you for explaining all of that. Right. Okay. 
Now, let's see what else I might explain to you. The, uh, the, the, when the war was over, and before coffee started arriving, there was a lot of black market coffee available. That meant those people who had money and are willing to pay phenomenal prices for the black coffee. It was a different story. Mm -hmm. But my parents never went to that stage. My father always used to say, one day we will have coffee and we... And shikari was not in our mm -hmm. house. No, we didn't like it, so... Mm -hmm. No. So, and what else I can tell you is that I had a wonderful use. Coffee was part of it. And like we had, which is not in America, we were brought up drinking wine while we were six years old. We would get a little glass of wine during the Christmas and Easter, and then slowly we got a little bigger glass when we got older. And it is ironic that in Holland, very few people are drunk. So, but. So what do you think about light coffee, light roasted coffee versus dark roasted coffee? What is your perception? It's very popular right now in the U.S. and other places to drink fairly lightly roasted coffee. Right. But you prefer dark. I prefer dark because that's the only way I was brought up with. And the light ones remind me so often at what you used to get at McDonald's, which was so watered down, I didn't really consider a cup of coffee. Although when I first got to Japan, McDonald's had some of the best coffee in the morning, <laughs> ironically. All right, so I see somebody is here for you. So I'm going to say goodbye okay. to the people on All the right. camera. And thank you for watching today. And I hope you will ask us some questions in the comments below and perhaps provide some feedback and your own experiences. Okay, fine. Bye-bye. Thanks. As I have been traveling around the world, this little filter has got me every day my fresh cup of coffee. We call it Café Filtre. In it, we just have a pin mark made by the Fayancerie de Kemper, plus the filter. And we're going to fill it up with coffee. The coffee was just grinded. I'm putting it in here. Make sure it's empty. Then I will take the little wooden pallet and make sure that it is all leveled out properly. And then I take the filter and I make sure when I put it down that I turn it slightly to make again everything should be level. Having done that part, we are ready to take the hot water, pour it in, and just bring it to the top of it. Not more, not less. You don't want to be mid. There we are. And now we wait. And you will notice that in the beginning, you won't have hardly any idea that the water is filtering through. But since there's so much coffee underneath, it is going to take a little while in the beginning. Then after a few minutes, you will see it goes much faster. And when it finally empties, you take off the filter and the coffee is ready. Be patient. <laughs> never boils. So a filter never falls if you watch it. I think I'd be impatient by now. I mean, if I was baking coffee in this way every time and watching.
watching it. Now what you do uh, is... But now I see the coffee is starting the water level, maybe. And what you do also, I should say that, because in Holland, of my travels I've done it, you let it slowly come down while you make your breakfast. Mm -hmm. And so when the time you have made your breakfast and you sit down, this will have gone down to the level you want it to be. Mm -hmm. And you'd never preheat your cups because the hot water does that for you right. with this process. Obviously, since we are waiting, it seems it's, to take uh, longer, but... Since it's on video, it's going to take twice as long. Yeah, but you can cut it off. <laughs> take it out. Oh, maybe it's fun to leave this in. Right. It's beginning. When it finally starts, it goes rather quickly, but... It has to get worked through the process. You can see the center little bridge. Yes, it's now exposed. Right. But I don't see the air bubbles. It's interesting because you mentioned air bubbles from below. And maybe yeah, you see them moving. Look at all the coffee moving. That means that... You see the coffee moving, yeah. So the, something pushes the coffee filter out, which are the air bubbles. It's very subtle. Yeah. But the whole process is very subtle. <laughs> I wonder whether this coffee, because you've been using Pete's French Roast to test right. this recently. Right. And today what we're using for this purpose is some Kenya that I got from Sweet Maria's in California. Right. And I roasted that last weekend. So it could be that fresh coffee behaves a little bit differently than... Uh, coffee that's been roasted further out or coffee that's been roasted darker because Pete's French roast is much darker than I usually roast. Right. But did you notice that it now slowly Yes, it's definitely, faster. we can see that the, that centerpiece is exposed. This is like a running sports commentary on the status of the filter coffee here. Of the cafe filter. Uh, you're not going to be able to ever teach me proper French pronunciation. Very in easy. fact, the reason I ended up in Japan was that uh, my French was so pitiful that at least in Japan, if you speak one word somewhat properly, people tell you your, your Japanese is so good. Whereas my experience, having never been to France, but having interacted with French people is any time I would try to speak their language, they would just act as if they understood nothing I was saying, and that I was doing something horrible to bastardize their right. language. Right. So, so I gave up. No, I, I can picked. imagine. I, I would have done the same. I just happened to run for 20 years in French factory, and the only one who spoke English is my secretary. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Are you trying to find out the book? No. Oh, that's good, right? So this is the... You can't even write it too late. Yes. Should we put it up here? Sure. Okay.